Well, hello, 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 hello to you all, but also hello to our studio audience. This is a very, very special, special treat. We are so excited to have you on The Good Life Show. But here's the thing, you're probably wondering, well, where is Von Toba? Where is my man, my man with the plan? He is not here today because we have the most exciting news for you. Well, you already tuned in because you know that this is our special. Today is so special because, again, we've got a live studio audience. We've got you here watching us. And where, where yet, audience? Let me hear you. Go ahead. Let them know you're here. Oh, my God. It, we are so, <laughs> so, so excited. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for joining. Today, we are here to talk about Women's History Month, and we are closing out with a bang with some of the most phenomenal women in history. I tell you what, I cannot do what I do without knowing that I've got mentors and women, a woman that raised me so positively and so strong, but then other women that get to be in my life on a daily basis that I have to pull on, I get to pull up, and I get to pull on the side. Women's history is such a big deal, but I really love women's present day, okay? Because I'm a part of women's present day hoping to make women's history. And to Today, we've got some phenomenal, phenomenal guests that are going to talk to us a little bit about how they just are, came through, so that how they are a part of women's history. But then, of course, I share it's all about present day, y'all. How can we help create legacy so that we continue to pass down phenomenal things in women's history? I cannot hold this any longer. I feel like I'm in my group chat. So we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk. We're going to get in, because you know in the group chat, we talk about the rest. I want to know how you did what you did. We're going to talk about some of the, I think I say like, let's get real, real. And I asked for the juice in this recipe. So we talked about smoothies already. I was, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that when we did our mic check. Y'all, we are going to have a really good time today. Well, again, I'm your host, Psyche Terry, excited to bring you the Good Life Show special edition, Women's History Month. Let's bring our guests on in. Hello. <laughs> hello, 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 beauties. Hi. Hello. Beauties and ballers. Y'all, we have the most phenomenal opportunity to have some of the most beautiful women and some of the most balling women. I mean, balling out of control, I feel like, literally as well as uh, figuratively, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all are phenomenal. Thank you so much for being a part of our beauties and ballers. Ballers and beauties oh my gosh. special. Thank you for having us. It's yeah. been a fun morning already. Already, y'all. Yes. Time. Yes. Well, we listen, we're here to share the story, right? So Von Toba and I get the opportunity to talk about TikTok trends and we talk about what else we talk? We we talk about relationships and then we we go into uh, a group chat. And that's usually when we bring in an audience or we bring in special guests into our, our own little audience and we talk and we want to know more because people have asked us, how do you do what you do? And I'll tell you what. I don't think that there's anything extra special about what I do compared to other amazing women like yourselves and how you do what you do. So with this Women's History Beauties and Ballers, I really wanted to just break it down, bring in some beautiful women that are also ballers, <laughs> and let's really just share the full story across the world, because we're carried across the world. Yeah. Let's talk to the world about how we do what we do. But before we do, let's find out who y'all are, right? <laughs> For all of those that are, I like to say, living under a rock, let me tell you, we've got some of the most phenomenal women here, and you'll forever, ever, ever be following them, watching their lifestyles. I've seen some, like, how I do my life. I've, I follow y'all. So I've seen the how I do my life, how I get ready. I've seen all of those tips and tricks. So first, I want to introduce my beauty and my baller, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Riviera, Mrs. America 2021. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Psyche. It's so good to be here to see you. You have been a dear friend for at least a year now, and I've loved watching your journey and so happy to be here on the couch with you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and I, I just love because we definitely did meet. We connected. And I mean, I remember just kind of meeting you and right. I feel like that's the good thing about women's history. We're already, I'm in it already. But when we met, you're like, girl, tell your story, mm -hmm. right? You're so positive and so just uh, just projecting that that amazing exuberance just when we first met. So Brooklyn, y'all, I mean, Brooklyn Riviera was crowned Mrs. America 2021, March 27, 
uh, March 27, 2021 at Westgate Resorts in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. I love me some Las Vegas. <laughs> so you're a mama, you're a wife, and, and, and wait, let me see. Now talk to me a little bit about this balling lifestyle. So tell me a little bit about the, your sports and your beauty. Like how does that merge together? So back before beauty pageants, so before I was Mrs. America, Mrs. Texas, um, I've, I'm a mom of three, mm. and I have a stepson as well who has a baby, so I'm a glamma. We've just we've yeah. talked about being glamma already. But before pageantry, I um, did sports, but I did a different type of sports than balling. I was a professional dancer. Yeah. So I started my sports career at the age of 20. Mm -hmm. So I danced for the NHL, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the two-time Stanley Cup champions. Mm -hmm. And then I moved over here to Texas and I danced for another four years with the ECHL, the Allen Americans. And after that, it, the, my life just kind of projected itself into pageantry and that's where God wanted me and I had a purpose and a passion behind why I did what I did and it landed me the title of Texas and then America and I was able to stand on the world stage just about eight weeks ago. Wow. So it's been amazing. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I do have chills and I'm, I know I'm emotive, but I do have chills. Because what I, I heard you just share, just, I mean, and we're not even in the good yet, right? We're, we're already in your good life, but I hear you sharing like, hey, here's where I started, here's where I am, and here's where I'm going, and here's what I just did. I, I absolutely love hearing that, you know, from a balling and sports perspective, the first thing that rang true in my mind was fitness, right? And just how you carry that through, whether it's balling, and we're gonna talk about the, <laughs> the wings and just how amazing our audience is, but, um, um, we've got the opportunity to talk about fitness and how fitness Absolutely. is important and how you've been able to bring that through your lifestyle of being a queen. So I, I, I just think that's really phenomenal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, let's keep let's keep our, our flow. Now, I've got a treat for you because, yes, next on our panel today with our beauty and ballers, we've got Izzy Isabel. Which, which show we call you today? Let's do Izzy. There you go. Okay, we, hey, listen, I mean, you, today you're giving me Isabel. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm getting Isabel today, baby. Isabel is with the Dallas Wings. Izzy Harrison, I'm born, you know, in, 20, in September 27th, 1993, is a forward for the Dallas Wings. She played basketball in college for, uh, in Tennessee, and you finished your career with 31 double-doubles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am, I play basketball basketball in um, junior high one game and then I was like ooh y'all uh, yeah okay I'm like ooh ooh y'all so tell me what a double double is like tell me I mean I, I'm reading so many amazing things about your percentages and you being I, I mean pick for the WNBA draft and then over to the wings in 2019 but talk yeah. to me like what first off what is a double double so a double double is if you average double figures in any category mm. but you have to do it in two categories so you can mm. do it in Points, rebounds, assists. Yeah. You don't want to do turnovers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's bad. But yeah, most of mine were points and rebounds. Yes. Yeah. So just so tell, tell me a little bit about your your love and beauty and your love in balling. So how 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 did you end up here on the stage? So my love for beauty. Um, my mom is really big into skincare. Um, she's a nurse. She's been an RN for most of her life. So she is really well known just about the body. Period. So. Growing up, I would just see how she took care of herself. And, you know, with me playing sports, if anything, we have to keep our skin yeah. clear mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. we use it so much. Mm -hmm. So growing up early, I had a face routine. Every night I washed my face, moisturizer, <laughs> um, and just the food side as well. You got to fuel your body, have it ready for play games and for practices because we play basically all year round. Mm -hmm. So um, having good food in you, it just makes a world of difference. But in sports, my dad, um, he played professionally in the NFL for 10 years. Mm. Um, and I'm one of 12, and all of us played in college and played for athletics, yeah. Um, <laughs> your face is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, one of 12, so I've been playing sports before I could even remember, and mm -hmm. I played basketball when I started. At four, he coached football at the University mm -hmm. of Vanderbilt, so he would take me with the basketball girls, and they would basically wash me, and I thought it was like the best day, but it was really free babysitting <laughs> in a way. <laughs> um, so sports and beauty has been in my life at a very early age, and I just carried it into my career this far. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing. Wow. wow. Just 
I'm, I'm hearing so much of just the consistency and just how it's, again, we talk about history, right? So again, I take a different approach to women's history where I'm like, we are leaving a legacy. And then we've also got some amazing stories in our history of your dad bringing you up through basketball, through football, and how just sports, athletics, and health, and beauty have all been intertwined. And look at you now. I mean, Dallas Wings, come on. We've got celebrities on our stage, and I am not ashamed to say it, okay? You hear it a lot, okay? I'm just letting you know. Okay, well, I am ready to move on over to our third and most special of all three. I am so excited that I've got so many amazing women on this panel. Women's History Month. And here we go. Charlie. Yes, Charlie Collier. Collier with the Dallas Wings, born September 22nd. I've got two September birthdays. Mm -hmm. okay. Aww. Aww. <laughs> 22nd of 1999. You're also a forward with the Dallas Wings. You played college basketball mm -hmm. at Texas Austin, and we are so excited to have you here today. So I've read some double-doubles about you as well. Y'all yeah. are balling out of control, okay? We got ballers, we got dancers, we got fitness, we got beauty. I am, I'm in, I'm in me. Uh, no, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I learned about what a double double is. I'm hearing a lot. Of, okay, so let me see. So um, you had some amazing points at, at Indiana, and you've had some amazing blocks as as a sophomore and a multiple all Big Twelve first time honors. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. You. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing it. Yeah. Yes. I'm yes. killing it. You are killing it. I'm yes. working hard too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know, just, you know, this past season was my rookie season at Dallas Wings. I was drafted number one overall um, in the wow. WBA draft. Okay. So Wait. All right. That is so That's awesome. That's what you're here so. for, okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would just say my journey with basketball, both of my parents played. Uh, my brother is also a collegiate athlete. He just signed with Oklahoma State the other day to play football. And so it's just him and me and him. And so my mom, you know, she always talked about just you know, being beautiful and being a baller. So I always represented my family first through all, like everything that I do. So just me, you know, looking good. You look good, you play good. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. So I got lashes done, nails, uh, everything when I'm playing my sport. So uh, I love basketball and I love looking like a girl. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. OK, I mean, it's so, so many uh, I just received so much. I mean, so many trinkets and so many, so many coins in that conversation of just hearing you. Like what I, what of course I'm gonna walk away with. If you, you, you feel good, you play good. I, we, and of course, being the good life. Let's just go ahead right with that. And we love talking about like feeling good, living good, doing good. And y'all are looking good. And y'all got me feeling good. And I love hearing you share. You know, hey, I've been through. Um, with my, my, my family and my brother playing, and here I am doing what I do, and number one draft pick. I mean, y'all are, Y'all are some phenomenal women. This is no, this is no ordinary, mm -hmm. no ordinary group here. <laughs> so we are going to not only are we going to listen to you, we're going to take notes from you because women want to. We, we want to listen to other women. I, I know that's how I got to be here as a founder of Urban Hydration, is I get to listen to other women. And y'all today are gonna inspire me, I already know. I'm already like, if you feel good, you look good, right? I don't, I'm not out there on, on the court with lashes and, and nails, but um, I am in my own court, right? So our watchers and our listeners, they're not all, they're on their own court, right? They're on their own stage. They're doing their own thing. So we're gonna pull together and just better understand how we can be better with this history that you're giving us. We're making history today. Mm -hmm. This is rare air, and I am excited to have you here. Well, here we go. We've got questions for you because we want to we want to be sure that our audience and our audience that's watching gets a chance to just understand. Y'all pull out your pens and paper because we've got some phenomenal women to take some phenomenal information from. First okay. question that I have is when did you realize, and, and I'll ask you, we'll start with you, Izzy. When did you first realize your love for sports, i.e. balling? Uh, I first realized it when I was taller than most of the girls at my age. <laughs> and I love playing with, like, at that age, of course, we're playing with dolls, Barbies. But I also love to go and pick up a basketball because that's what I saw growing up. Um, and I realized that, I'll tell you the story, I was at a Vanderbilt basketball camp. 
and I was little and the coach called on me to do a left-handed layup. Most people, that's hard for them to do at that mm -hmm. age. So I was able to do it in front of the camp and everybody cheered and I was like, hmm, I think I'm gonna stay with this for a little bit longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, getting that confidence that early from a college coach, it kind of made me want to see how much more I could do with it. Of course, I played other sports growing up, but basketball is something that I fell in love with. And my older brother, David Harrison, he played in the NBA for a couple years for the Pacers in Indiana. And going to his games and just seeing how he was able to accomplish and, you know, direct his journey, I could see myself doing that, but as a woman. Um, and growing up, I didn't see too much representation for it, but I wanted to make sure, you know, I started that for my own journey. Mm. I love that. Listen, we, I'm gonna go with wings. So I just feel like there's so many wings in this room today. <laughs> so I heard you share, you know, I looked around and I saw it look different. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't use that information that I understood to be a negative, but I went, what can, what can I do with this, mm -hmm. right? I love hearing that because I look different. My skin was dark and I'm like, what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. I had eczema up, up and down my whole body. What am I going to do with this? But I took it and I worked very hard to figure out how can I better myself mm -hmm. or how can I change my situation or my circumstance. So I love hearing that you, you went to camps and you invested and mm -hmm. you took the time and then you had, it sounds like, someone that you looked up to. Mm -hmm. And I think even for me, I mean, I'm like, okay, parents, okay, people, make sure that we are investing in our, our children and then also being sure that we are being, because what I love is you, you talked about your brother and how you looked up to him and then how you created that space before yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm hearing you. We taking notes. We taking notes, y'all. <laughs> yeah. We taking notes, okay? All right. Well, then I'm going to come over because we have Mrs. America here, 2021. Yes, so talk to me about your, your love for sports, i.e. balling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it started from a young age. Uh, my parents really instilled getting out in the community and learning life lessons through teamwork and commitment. So I started dancing and cheerleading and did that through high school. And then in college, right across from the University of South Florida is an amusement park called Bush Gardens. And at 18 years old, I lived by myself and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go for it. And I landed lead roles from my very first audition. So I started singing and dancing professionally then. Um, and then I, I met my husband very early on and we had our first baby and I thought, well, that's it. And he goes, why is that it? You know, why, why is the baby going to stop you from doing anything? So she was four months old when I made um, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I took her to the games. She wore her little earmuffs into, you know, 60,000 people in the stands. And her love for hockey grew then. And I danced all the way until I was 20 weeks pregnant with my second baby. So I was on ice skates dancing. And my director came to me. She goes, Brooklyn, it's time. It's time. The crop top just isn't going to work with the belly. But I did that all the way up until my babies. And I showed them that, you know what, you can have your babies and your dreams. It doesn't stop with you guys. You are the reason why I keep on doing this. And that led me into pageantry, which I've been able to not only show them, but show our state and then show our nation that you don't have to pick and choose, that you can do it all, just not all in one day. Yeah. So if you show yourself a little grace, you're able to accomplish more than you ever could imagine. Mm. Oh my, so many, so many wings have just flown through <laughs> here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm trying to, let me just, I'm gonna just be honest and, and share that I'm over here crying. Um, I'm already inspired and that's what this is all about, is how can we inspire that next generation? So let me just, let me, let me first dab, right? So we're trying not to mess this up. But boy, oh boy, okay, what I hear is you, you started in one area and you continued, you had a passion and, you know, knowing teen moms, and my mom was a teen mom, but knowing that there are people, women out here, you know, we want to make history, but, and I'm gonna try not to cry, but we want to make history, but we feel like we can't, mm -hmm. right? We, we, we see other women doing things and we're like, oh no, that's, that's her. But I love that you even said, you know, even years before you even had the baby, it's like, I'm gonna give it a shot, right? right? You gave it a shot. And I think that is so phenomenal. And I think it's definitely something that we need to take note of. We need to, we need to listen to, take down, 
and give yourself a shot. And no matter what the, your circumstance is, I'm so happy that my mom, you know, had me and, and gave herself a shot even as a teen mom. If you're a teen mom or you're a mom of, you know, of, 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 of any age, just still go for it. If there's something out there that you want to do, whether it's a crop top and dance, girl, right. do you, right? Because it can be done well. I love hearing that. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your story there. Okay, you ready, Charlie? I'm ready. You ready? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna ask you about that first love. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna ask you about that first love for sports. Uh, my first love for sports, I started playing sports early on, like five years old, but didn't really get serious about basketball until I was in middle school. Mm. But prior to that, I played anything. I played softball, I was on the swim team, volleyball. I didn't like volleyball. <laughs> I wanted a sport that was more physical and something that I was good at. And of course I was taller than everybody, but I also had a job, you know. Being the oldest um, for my younger brother, I had to set the, set the tone, be the example, so. Both of my parents would tell me, you know, just not necessarily strict, but I always had to be, you know, that role model for him. And then eventually being a role model for younger girls at an early age, and so I took on the role of being a leader very young. Um, both of my parents instilled greatness in me, like at a young age, they were like, you're gonna be great. And so just from there, then on out, I just had that, that image that, you know, I always had to be the best at what I did. So um, basketball became that sport and uh, I fell in love with it. Um, I became good at it and so just took it to that next level. But, you know, at the end of the day, I do what I do because not only I'm good at it, but I see so many girls that I inspire. And so at that young age, it was just, you know, that first love, just seeing how many girls love basketball like I do really just inspired me to keep going. So. I don't know uh, if if I'm gonna be good at these specials, y'all, because I'm <laughs> over here like seriously, like yeah. I'm gonna need a tissue box next to me. I'm trying to do my Oprah thing, but I never saw Oprah like just break down on the couch, just like in intros, okay? But I am truly inspired, and I cannot help it, and I'm unashamed. I'm unashamed to share how inspired I am by you three. Okay, so Charlie, what I'm hearing you share that, I mean, I'm over here once again, um, balling, right? I'm balling over here. <laughs> I'm balling out on control. Trend. Right, a different <laughs> word of balling. I, I just hear you, um, you know, what, what my, my heart is, is hearing is that you cared about other people. And while you started, you know, in a, a ton of different things, and I do love that because my son is in baseball and he believes he's gonna finish in baseball. My, my middle son is just like, whatever, whichever. And I love that because then you went, well, by middle school, that's when I started getting serious. But the fact that you got out there and you tried different things, I think that's so helpful in so many different ways and so many different worlds. Um, what, I, what I do share that my heart really got, got touched with is that you, no matter what, no matter the timing, you felt, a need to lead and inspire your brother and then that just grew and I feel like you know with what we get the opportunity to do we get the opportunity to be a forward with the Dallas Wings or we get the opportunity to be um, Mrs. America and represent the, the country and to the world but more than anything when we take on that heart place of like all right I'm just gonna inspire. I know that's my job. I know that's my role. I feel like we get elevated and, and just escalated even more, right? And I want, I, I, I'll, I'll just speak for, for y'all. I, I think there's opportunity for us that are on Instagram scrolling, watching y'all, looking at your stories and wondering like, how can I? When can I? When is my time? I think that there's a heart that has to be at least not necessarily changed, but there has to be a heart thought of, well, if I can consider well, am I inspiring someone? Is this, is this action that I'm doing, is it uplifting someone else? Maybe that's when your, your world will start to open up where you get an opportunity to be on huge stages like or courts like yourselves. I don't know, that's just my question. Um, okay, so what are you known? So we talked a little bit about your, your background, but I, I got a quick and a funny here, but what are you known to America for? Okay, well, I mean, obviously, I think America knows me as their queen, yep. right? All right. So um, I, I would say that I, I'm known for representing our country, um, being a crazy mama of a lot of little monster kiddos, um, singing all over and loving our military probably more than anybody okay. in America. And you went right to my, my uh, where I said, I want to dig, I want to dig deep yeah. for the juice. What do you know to your friends and family for? Ooh, we've already Give talked about it. So <laughs> the audience already heard me talking about my love. 
you don't know enough about me, Psyche, unless you know that I am a queso connoisseur. Oh, connoisseur, you connoisseur, say? Connoisseur, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so you have the good life show, but if I had my own show, it would be called OK So. <laughs> and I would travel America tasting queso and bringing people the cheese uh, on different I'm levels. Not. Okay, now I'm laughing all different way. <laughs> yeah, oh, so people like know that. me for just my love for queso and you wouldn't guess that. Yeah, and I actually talked about it in my Mrs. America interview and it got me the crown. So my point has been confirmed that you can do anything with queso on your side. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anything is possible. I'm a guacamole girl. All things all, are possible. All things are possible with look queso. Have you had, I just gotta add, before I get to the next question, have you had cashew queso? See, now, you don't... I just needed to ask. You don't mess up cheese like that. What? By using, by using nuts, nuts in replace yeah. of oh, milk. Oh, it's good, though. No, ma'am. It's so... Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you are the connoisseur. Pass. You can hard pay. Yes. <laughs> Trash or pass, right? Trash pass, it. pass. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and pass over. Okay, here we go. So, what are you known to America for? And then, again, now you know the juice. I want to mm. hear something good. Give me that good, good <laughs> juice. What do you know to your friends and family for? So America first. America, it would be just a great basketball player, all around good teammate, definitely family, family oriented, um, and a good, fun-loving spirit. And then, so what your, and that's what your fans know you for. That's what they love yeah, you for. for sure. What don't they know about you? What, <laughs> what do you, what do your friends and family know you for? Our, the fans want to know. Yeah, I'm actually. A lot of people say I'm very soft spoken, but to the people that I know, I'm actually like goofy, very out there, wild. Ah, like, yeah, I get yeah. like life of the party. <laughs> Life of Life the party, party, you say? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, we need to look in her TikTok drafts. Uh, okay. Drafts. Oh, drafts. Okay. drafts okay. I'm going to keep them in the drafts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just very fun loving. I love just good energy around me, and I like to keep good people around me too. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Charlie, what do you know to America for? Um, I really don't do too much. I'm really a chill person. Um, I guess in America would know me as a basketball mm -hmm. player. Some people think I'm a model, which that's cool. I like that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really a basketball player. Uh, my friends or people that know me, they say I'm funny. I really don't. I don't see it. She's funny. But is it, <laughs> like my teammates would be like, Charlie, you're so funny. I'm just like, I'm being serious right now. How do y'all think I'm funny? But no, I'm just really, you know, soft-spoken, humble. Um, don't like to brag a lot. I'm a really good people person. And uh, yeah, I'm just humble, chill. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love, listen, I know fans, I know watchers, I know your your followers are just like, okay, I think that's probably why then. Okay, now I get it. All right, well, we're going to continue with this juice as I shared. People, uh, the, the reason we started the Good Life show was Vatoba, my dearest husband. I know this is Women's History Month, but girl, I, listen, I couldn't do a thing without my yes. boo, okay? Mm -hmm. 17 years this year. Wow. Love Woo. pieces. Love that. So one of the things that people, well, people overall would ask us is just like, how are you doing what you do? Tell me, what, what is your recipe? So again, the reason that we wanted to bring y'all on is so that we could share other people's recipes because we believe that we are, there's so many different stories of success mm -hmm. here in this world. So here, I'm gonna get more into your recipe. When did you, this is, this is an interesting one, but when did you realize that you were um, a celebrity in your particular field, right? Like, so how did that feel? And I, I asked that particularly because it's like, people ask me like, when did you know that you were, um, you know, Miss Urban Hydration, and I'm just like, I don't, oh, yeah. I, I don't know, but like, when did you know? Because there is a moment, right? I, I did know, the, for me, I knew when customers would tell me, right? This worked for me, this changed my, and I went, really? And they found me enough to say that to me, I went, I must be doing something right. So when did you realize that you were a celebrity, i.e. doing something right, right? Something worth noting. You know, I have two aha moments that have happened since becoming Mrs. America, and one involves my little girl. I was asked to be a speaker at career day for her, and she um, she's a hard one to crack. Kids are very honest, and um, they don't care who you are. You're still just their mom. So I am not cool in her eyes, but I knew that when I walked in and gave my presentation, you know, as a mom, you are so-and-so's mom. Mm -hmm. But they were like, 
that's Mrs. America, Rayma's mom. And so they knew me as who I was and not just her mom. And at that point I was like, okay, I've made it as an actual person now. I'm not just, you know, and there's nothing better than being a mother, but when you can be your own person too, and also that representation for your little ones and her walk away from that, not being extremely embarrassed by me, but a little proud. And she was like, I knew that, okay, I'm, I'm making an impact. And then the other biggest moment for me that I knew um, that I was making my dreams and goals come true that I had from a little girl was when the Atlanta Braves called me and asked me to come to Turner Field and sing the national anthem as Mrs. America. And I can remember my daughter being there as well on the pitching mound, singing the national anthem and looking out at the crowd and seeing my daughter look at me. And when I was done, she just said, that is the coolest thing you've ever done. And I was like, I know, <laughs> that was really, and my um, baby sweetheart, Chipper Jones, yes, I talk like I know the man, um, he's a professional baseball player for the Atlanta Braves, was there. And all my dreams came true that day, and I could die happy. And then, you know, I've done a lot of things as Mrs. America, where I've raised $10,000 and marched the streets of Dallas with my husband, and people ask, what's the most, you know, best thing I'm like Chipper Jones saying that I was really good <laughs> and they're like okay all right but those just those so you know it's the simple moments that mean the most and make the biggest impact yeah no I, I you you remind me of you know what really helped me I'm, I'm I get the opportunity thanks to your help to be Mrs. Mrs. Texas mm -hmm. America's most beautiful and I knew that I had made it when my family asked me to MC my grandma's funeral. Ooh. They went, oh, you are amazing. How about you do the funeral? And I went, thank you. So not yet. I haven't quite gotten over to the Atlanta Braves, but I love y'all Smith family. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm going to come over to you, Charlie. When did you know that, and I love the way you put that, when did you know that you were um, fulfilling your dreams, but then overall just like coming out to, to the world to show that you are indeed a celebrity. People are following you. They love it. Actually, really early. I would say um, it was my eighth grade year. I signed my first autograph after a game. Mm. And at the time, like, my parents were telling me, you need to practice your autograph, practice your autograph. And then before you know it, I signed my first one. And I just remember, like, crying on the way home, like we won the game and all that, but it was an exciting moment. Like I never did that before. You usually see at the time when I'm on TV watching so-and-so, maybe Candace Parker or something, she's signing autographs. So I'm like, do they really think of me this way? Am I this good of a basketball player? And then, you know, that just really was a, a good moment for me knowing that, you know, I'm doing something good. I'm playing basketball well enough for people to, to see it. And so just me having that at what, 14, 15 years old and then the following year going to high school, it just went on from there. But I never was arrogant about stuff like that. You know, if someone wanted to autograph for a picture, I would do it. Because if I was in the room with LeBron James or Candace, like, I'd be like, can I have your autograph too? So definitely an humbling moment and a cool moment for me. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you for sharing. And, and we can feel that, we can hear that. And I know that this is why your fans love you so much. Izzy, when did you know? <laughs> when did it dawn upon you, girl? Did you just wake up like, I made it here. I arrived. I am arrived. <laughs> uh, no, mine is kind of similar to, to Charlie's. I had a game in high school, and I just got done playing. And I was actually about to leave the gym, and um, two kids kind of chased after me to mm -hmm. get my autograph and my picture. And I was looking crazy, <laughs> but I was like, kind of like Charlie, of course, I'm going to take my time to, to do that. And again, I went to the University of Tennessee and Pat Summit, great legendary coach, and she always made sure she took the time to, you know, say hello to people, talk to people, and the line could be out the door. She was going to speak to every last one of those. So I think that's something that for us as athletes, like, and even for you, Brooklyn, mm -hmm. like, taking the time to appreciate the people that appreciate you mm -hmm. and show them, like, I couldn't be here without you guys right. and the supporters. I don't like to say fans. I like to say supporters because they really do, you know, um, see you through your career, which I really love. Um, 
I have two more moments. So I have an internship right now with the Mavericks and I'm able to go to games and my little nephew, he's seven, he thinks it's like the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. So I got to bring him to his first game. So I got to bring him to the pregame. He went to go on the court and they he helped assist like a dunk for um, Dwight Powell, one of the players on the Mavericks. I have not stopped hearing about that moment Aww. since then. And for me to, you know, give him that moment, uh, and experience when his first Mavericks game. And as an auntie, that's something, mm -hmm. like you said, to your kids, it's like, I want to be cool to y'all, you know? Yeah. And for them to say that, you know, they love you and they appreciate you, that just means the world to me. Oh, and my last one is, uh, <laughs> this is for the beauty side. And I thought this was really cool. So that was the first to me. It was actually this past summer. And I was in the TSA pre-check line and a woman stopped me and she was like, are you Izzy? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I changed my whole beauty routine because of your um, how-tos on your page, on your Instagram page. And for me, I, again, I love beauty, but I put that information out there for people to be like, it's normal for us to want to take care of ourselves, men and women. So mm -hmm. if these are tips that are going to help me, I'm going to share it with everybody. Mm -hmm. So for her to come to me and say that, I was just like, wow, I made a difference in one person's, you know, how they feel about their appearance. I think that made me feel so special. Oh, wow. wow. I, yeah. I, I love it too. I, I'm, I mean, it drives me right over to my next question, just as self-care and how important it is in your particular career field. As a beauty baller, mm -hmm. let's just finish it on up with us. Talk to me about self-care in, in your world. Well, for I mean, for us, our bodies were that's our job. We have to make sure every inch of us is doing well to perform at the highest level at all times. Literally, we play year round. Um, so from an early age, I always took my nutrition, my sleep. Um, and my mental health really serious. Um, and I keep good people around me. So I think doing that, but also loving what you do, that's a part of self-care. You can look and feel your best, but if you go into something that you're not passionate about, eventually it's gonna start wearing on you. And um, I feel like with basketball, I've been able to wake up every day and enjoy what I do. So with taking care of myself, taking care of my mental, and I also have my passion, I just, I feel like I glow <laughs> mm. with what I get to do. and. You know, I have my family that supports me, and it's just I'm in a really good space right now. Love it, love it. Charlie, I'm, I'm bouncing it over to you. Yeah. Pardon my pun. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely what I would agree with Izzy was saying. It's important to take breaks. You know, you come in a point of time in your career um, that you might need a break. It's just a lot going on mentally um, in your field of work, and it's okay to take breaks and give yourself that moment to regroup. And so I feel like for me, especially, I'm really young going into my career, but I've been playing basketball long enough to know that it can get stressful at times and that you need, like Izzy said, great people around you to, to surround you with words of encouragement or um, just people praying for you, anything. And so it's just very important to make sure that you are okay with what you're doing because you're not here to impress people. You're here to show people how to play your sport or what you do in your field, but at the best of your ability. So if you're just out there and you're not happy doing what you do, it's just at that point, it just feels like a job. Your job should just be something that you like to do. And then you like to go to work every day. Like when I'm going to the gym, I should love going to the gym. So I really take that important and uh, seriously when I'm approaching the game of basketball. Love that, love that self-care. Just taking breaks is definitely a part of self-care and Brooklyn. Yeah. Absolutely, like these ladies have said, it's it's important to take care of yourself physically, but beauty is you know more than just skin deep. I think we, we wash our face, but we forget that we should probably wash our brains too, a lot. And that's where community steps in and giving yourself a lot of grace. So as a mom and a former business owner, I now manage a business and you know, it's stressful and you feel like you're juggling balls and you, if you don't give yourself grace, you'll put yourself down. You'll say, well, I'm dropping this one, I'm dropping that one, and really you're not. You just have to learn how I've said it. You can do it all, just not all in one day. So for me, it was about making no misses and being willing to miss things, but having that boundary of this is a no-go. So yes, I'll come on your show, but I've got to be done by the softball game tonight or you know, by the t-ball game and just putting those in play and learning that no is an okay answer at times so that you can feel good from the inside and you'll have that glow on the outside and realizing that it is okay to ask for help. As strong women, we like to just get stuff done and sometimes we think um, explaining it to someone else, it, we might as well just do it ourselves mm -hmm. instead of taking that time. But really, um, I don't know the saying off 
the bat, but you can either give a man a fish or you can teach him how to how to how how to fish. And so you can feed him once, or you can feed him for his whole life. So if you take the time and show someone how to do something, that's off your plate now, and you've done it that one time. But now you don't have to worry about that again. So it's really about not just self care, as in taking the day off or um, you know putting your feet up. Self care is way deeper than that. It's about managing yourself. Self. Yeah. yeah. Oof, yes. Mm -hmm. Self care, self care, mm -hmm. mental care, taking a break and glowing. Mm -hmm. Y'all are giving us, I, I, I know for a fact that your fans, our fans, our followers, our supporters mm -hmm. are taking notes. Yes? Yeah. How y'all like this audience? Yeah. yeah. Good, good information. I am so, so grateful to be able to have head y'all. Um, I like to, to always just d drill back. So we're going to go back into time. And before, before we close out our segment, I want to ask you about your 10-year-old self. So I told you we're going to go back. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a long time back, girl, but I can Same. remember. I remember her. <laughs> so we're going to go back. And I want to know, so it says, if we were to talk to your 10-year-old your self, what would you tell your 10-year-old self? That's when you, usually what we ask in our group chat on The Good Life Show. But I want to know particularly just a couple years back. I'm not going to go way, way back for the sake of, of me and, and those of, of my age. <laughs> we're just going to go a couple years back. The world, right? So we. we we just realized that we've gone worldwide. Our world went through a huge tragedy and is still peeling our way, trugging through the mud to get out of our, the pandemic that we, we all had to go through. Tell me just a bit about what you would have told your pre-pandemic self, right, at, about going through it. Just what are some of the mental things that you would have shared with yourself? Because I know y'all went through, because we just kind of all did. But if you, if you, you knew it was coming tomorrow, what would you say to yourself? And really who we're talking to, ladies, is we're talking to someone who is still in their own personal pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Who's still struggling and trugging through, and they're still two years ago. Their two years ago is still right now. So really, if it was tomorrow, it's coming, what would you tell yourself right now to prepare your mind for, for just tragedy and catastrophe? You know, Psyche, that's such an important thing to sit and kind of contemplate on where we were such a short time ago and how grateful we are to be sitting here. But for the person that isn't on this stage, that hasn't made it through that, I would tell them, if you're breathing, you're living. And if you're living, you have a purpose. And so don't lose sight of that. That it's dark and it's heavy, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it and you're gonna come out better and stronger and more vibrant and you don't have to stay where you come from. That's, that's honestly what I would tell somebody that's in it today and that's what I would tell my 10 year old self, that you are not where you come from and you don't have to stay there. If you don't like it, move. That's all you have to do. And it's as easy as that. Don't put the pressure on yourself one day at a time. Love it, love it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, love it. And now I can understand. I mean, I knew, but I can understand <laughs> why you are Mrs. America. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just gonna roll right through the line. Izzy, talk to me. What can we say? What can you, how can you help inspire our audience about their good life and just how to move into a good life um, just in thought process? Um, I would say for me, my mindset at the pandemic was I was playing basketball. I was going in my fourth year at the time overseas in WBA, and I kind of wanted a change of pace. And again, very grateful that I lived through that. Mm -hmm. Like she was saying earlier, a lot of people have, did not get that um, that grace, and it was kind of really heartbreaking to see that. But it kind of put my life in perspective and what I wanted for myself and my career. And I think that's something that really shifted my mind into investing in myself and not just going through the motions motions I feel like oftentimes in our jobs we just kind of wake up nine, whatever it is go back home and just over and over and over and I got tired of that life I was like at my age I should just be living I should be enjoying mm -hmm. it I shouldn't be worried about relationships or anybody that's just bringing me down no I should live for myself I should pour into other people as well but you know making sure I'm taking time to take care of me and my goals and my passions and I think that's what the pandemic gave me that opportunity and I feel like since then I just been my own teacher in a way um, I kind of knew what I needed to do but that just kind of gave me that extra push and I would say I figured out what made me different and I used that 
And mm -hmm. again, it's something I would tell my 10 year old self, it's okay that you stand out, you do it, it's for a reason. Yeah. And whatever you, you have at that age, embrace it. And it's gonna make you so special one day because not everybody has that. Um, and I, I wish I could tell myself that way earlier, but now that I'm actually grasping it, I feel like my life has just been that much more fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, that's so good. I, I feel like whether you're pre-pandemic, whether you're 10, whether you're telling your 10-year-old self, or whether you're just kind of restarting, I love the idea of just really drilling in and recognizing that you are who you are. You are special. You are made for something. You have a purpose. And I think you all have realized your purpose. And that's what's so attractive about you, right? You glow. You absolutely do grow, glow. And you glow because you grow, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Close us out with this this question, and it's so it's so deep too. Yeah, I mean, I was in the middle of my tournament, um, my Big Twelve tournament at the time when we got the news that we have to go home because of the pandemic. So I didn't even get to finish my career in the sense of that year, that season. So that pandemic really was a reality check to me that you could be at your highest at any time, and at any point in time, you could just come right back down bring it back down to earth. So really during that season, that pe pandemic, when it first started, um, you know, we were all at home, you know, had a lot of time to think, had a lot of time to regroup. Um, maybe things were moving too fast. And if you're like me or any of the people that support me, like I'm a believer. And so I believe that God puts you in situations that transform you or maybe you're getting too comfortable and he's telling you, you need, it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I just really remember that season, me just picking it up a notch. You know, I feel like at the time, maybe I thought I was being humble, maybe I was just being comfortable with where I was at and I had to change. Um, whether that was what I did on a daily routine and I had to, I, didn't, I couldn't go to the nail shop, I couldn't go to get my lashes done. So I was just pure, it was, I was just Charlie and I had to wake up and, uh, in the mirror and see myself every day and realize that, okay, we're in a pandemic right now, what can you do? You know, what can you do? Get active on social media. Um, I think at that time I did a food drive with the University of Texas. So just something I could do with the community. So uh, that was a re really pivotal moment in my career and i um, grateful for it because I think it truly changed me and I, I'm really thankful for the pandemic because I'm not the same Charlie that I was, so yeah. Amazing. I mean, I can, I can see why. I, I completely can see why you all are ballers and you all are beauties because you are, you, you're ballers and you're beauties. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really taking so many personal notes and I know we've got this fantastic audience here. So if, if at all, does the audience have any questions? Feel free. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the audience? Oh, they said they have a mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just do a question. So, if um, like during during this transition and everybody's life during the pandemic and things like that, what was your like your solace? Where did you find your peace? What kind of hobbies did you develop? Like just keep you like sane and just going. Yeah. What did What did you find? Um, what brought you peace? What What really kind of just what What brings you peace? What are some of the hobbies that you that you personally enjoy? We'll just I'll go through the line, yeah. Brooklyn. For me, my family is so busy because there's so many of us, and we all go separate ways at all times. And I'm a taxi driver, so being forced to stop and to just have nothing to do but spend time was actually the best blessing that it could have been to sit down and have nightly dinners because we couldn't order you had to cook uh, my 10 year old at the time taught me TikTok, so <laughs> that was a whole new world we sat and we have laughed now we struggled and everybody did i mean jobs were lost and income was you know not even a thing at the time but it, it, it was but we were so happy so a part of me has really tried to invest in my family and take what we learned through the pandemic and pull it into this almost post pandemic time and go you know what but we still really love that family time so let's block off Sundays let's make no misses so that we don't completely get too far from that yeah, absolutely that family time was so essential during the pandemic and I was fortunate enough to actually be with my family. I know a lot of people didn't have that opportunity. Yeah. Um, but then I got to see my nieces and nephews, that's who I was with at the time, 
just kind of grow and like what their interests were because again they are in all types of sports right now barely at the house until it's time for dinner time yeah um and then i got to hear about their days and of course they pulled me into their crazy stuff the tiktoks we would go on our neighborhood <laughs> walks but again i was just like i want to do some stuff for izzy so the social media that's what i wanted to do i showed people my skincare routines during the pandemic um what i was eating to stay active and um just how I made my mind just go, because it was easy while we're in the house to not do anything and just watch Netflix all day or Tiger King or whatever it was at yeah, the time. Tiger King. <laughs> that yeah. were on. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was just keeping my brain active and like spending as much time as I could with my family. Yeah, okay. yeah. I would just say family too. Family time. Um, me and my brother's schedules are crazy. Him being football, me and basketball, so we never really got to. I know my brother, but we didn't have the time as much. So just. We spent more time with each other, and of course my mom too, but um, just that time, it was just great for family time, you know, mm -hmm. realizing the time that we didn't, that we missed, you know, throughout the years, just being busy, busy, busy. Now you have to be forced to sit down and get to know each other more and know your family and know yourself. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I remember, um, I remember pre-pandemic saying that I want to spend more time with my kids. I want to be with my children more than their teachers are. And I realized that I wasn't when my, my baby said, Miss, I mean, Mommy. And I yeah. went, oh, oh, we got to change so this. Nice. So when, when, when we were told and made to stop and to focus and to take a hold of what is around you that you can love on even the more, we, we love that. And I love hearing that I'm in my, my skincare world, right, with Urban Hydration. You're in your Mrs. America world. You're in your Dallas Wings. And you are, I mean, in a whole tournament. I mean, we were in different parts of the world doing different things. But there's one symbol um, of family that really holds true and holds strong. And, you know, I love to call my, my new friends my family. So thank you all for just joining our family today. Thank you for sharing your, your love and your support for our supporters and our what we call our lovies. Y'all, this is the good life. And we just had an opportunity to have the most impactful Women's History Month discussion with some of the most amazing women here on this earth. I am more than honored to have had you ladies. Thank you so much. One more round of applause for the audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you. sharing your, your beauty, your ball, <laughs> and thank you for being with us today. I am honored and I'm thankful. Thanks for joining the good life. Thank, thank you, you. you. you did it. <laughs>